The Big Bark Listen up dog owners It's for you All you canine lovers It's your favorite podcast The Big Bark With your host Dara Burke And canine co-hosts Bruno And Millie The Big Bark Hello and a big welcome to the Big Bark. I'm your host, Dara Burke, and as always, I am joined by my two canine co-hosts, Bruno and Millie. So, we've been off here for a couple of weeks now. We took a little holiday, a nice little holiday, because, you know, I decided I needed a little bit of a break in between the, I suppose, the episodes. And now we're back. We, uh, just to give you an idea... We're going to be recording another six episodes over the next, between six to eight weeks. We will be wrapping up on our Halloween special, which will be around, in or around the 20th of October. We're hoping to announce maybe a bit of a competition for that one, a sort of a fancy dress competition. We didn't do one last year, but we did one like two years ago. So, we'll... Look, we'll look at that maybe next week because we also want to get kind of get going I'll, on a few other things. I'll be telling you about them a bit later on. And for now, back to today's show. So today we have our, let's see what we got. We have the health up coming up with three vets. We have... A few other bits and pieces coming up. We'll be announcing our winner from the Pups in the Park giveaway. We have a bit of information on Pups in the Park as well. We'll be talking about how doggies, when they, they actually cry happy tears when they see the owners coming home. True story. Real true story. We'll be talking about a bit about that later on as well. So... We have a lot to come really on our show today. Well, not a lot, just a, a fair amount on the show. So, okay, let's start off anyway, and we'll talk to you a bit about the, I suppose, the, let's start off by what I just mentioned there, how dogs cry happy tears when their owners come home. This is a very nice new story, and it is based on a new study in our study that's been going on for a number of months actually in Azabu University in Japan and according to researchers there our furry friends experience such an overflow of oxytom, oxytocin the love hormone when they reunite with donors that it causes their eyes to fill up with tears we know dogs feel basic emotions such as love, anger, fear but these, like these, I suppose, this new research, it like really shows canine emotion in such a, like a new light. Now, as part of the study, researchers first measured the uh, tear volume of dogs before they were reunited with their owners. They were separated with their owners for more than five hours. And when they were reunited with their owners, it was found that the dog's eyes actually welled up with tears of happiness. So, Professor Takafumi Kikushi, hope I pronounced that right, apologies if I didn't, who found his poodle crying happy tears after giving birth, told uh, various news outlets, including the Mail Online, we had never heard of the discovery that animals shed tears in joyful situations, such as reuniting with their owners, and we were all excited that this would be a world first. Dogs have become a partner of humans, and we can form bonds. In this process, it is possible that dogs show teary eyes during the interaction with their owner, who would be cared for by the owner more. So... Scientists are now investigating whether time apart is also... Uh, connected to negative emotions so there'll be more on that hopefully in the next few months it's actually such a like a lovely story to hear and speaking of lovely stories to hear another one that we want to talk a little bit about too today is if my laptop just would stop crashing is 
it's a story of a postman up in County Leash. Now, look, this is a TikTok video, so the audio may not kind of, I don't really want to use the audio per se. Actually, I'm not even going to play here, copyright and all that crap. But basically, <laughs> what happens is, this postman, he, in County Leash, is on his last day of deliveries. And he stops by every single dog that he's met like, over the years and gives them a treat. Tells them they're all the best doggies and they're all his friends. If you want to see it, it's a really beautiful video. It's up on our Instagram story. And it's something that we definitely would recommend to take a look at. Because it is so, so cute. It's really, really cute. And definitely recommend that. Um, today, I suppose, we are talking about a bit about back to school. Our canine conundrum, actually, that came up this week, that was sent in to us by one of our listeners. I'm going to call it out to you first because it has a direct impact on today's show. So, let's see. I, at... Uh, the listener wrote in. I've been told I have to return to the office after two and a half years and I have no one to look after my dog during the day. I am absolutely devastated because I don't want to leave my dog all alone. I can't afford doggy daycare. He's my baby and my boss is a total... Uh, let's... Let, use your imagination for the word I'm leaving out there. <clears throat> And he's a dog here who doesn't care about the negative impact this would bring for my dog. He's lonely if I leave him alone for an hour. He's very well behaved, mind you. Just gets really down and so sad. Any advice from your listeners who have been through this would be great. Now let's just kind of get an idea of what some of our listeners said. Uh, a lot of our listeners saying, are you in a position to get home during today? Uh... Get home for lunch for an hour. Leave the radio on. Someone says here my dog is pretty chill on his own. Maybe he doesn't like me. I really hope that's not the case. Uh, someone says here, good idea. Get a camera on Amazon so you can keep an eye on him. There's a lot of doggy kind of cameras out there now that you can interact with your dog on. There's some that even disperse treats. Uh, I'm not 100% behind doors because I think if the dog hears your voice, it can confuse the dog. It can upset them even more. And, like, hopefully it, it doesn't. Uh, someone says here, what's there to think about? Find a new job, family comes first. Now, okay, part of me agrees with that. But the other part of me at the same time is like, okay, well, that's not exactly a viable option for a lot of people. So... It it really isn't. Um, for a lot of people, that's not something they can do. Uh, let's see. Yeah, those are kind of main kind of topics come in. And if you have any uh, thoughts on this, you can add it to there's a Q and A box up on our Instagram story that you can add it to. So go ahead and be sure to do that. Now, it does impact directly on today's episode because we are talking about people going back to the office. We are talking about the fact that it starts September and kids are going back to school. So dogs will be alone in the house on their own. It can lead to a lot of separation issues. It can lead to separation anxiety. And coming up after this quick ad, we will be talking to Dr. Siobhan O'Neill from Treaty Vets, who will be telling us what you could do about the different things you can do to help with separation anxiety and the adjustment uh, for go of going back to school. And, well, yeah, so that's actually very what, much what we're talking about. So I'll be right back with you with Dr. Trevon on your farm tree vets on the health hub after this. Do you have a pet in need of a vet or do you need some health advice for your four-legged friend? Whether it's for a regular checkup, microchipping, vaccinations or critical urgent care, you can rest assured knowing that your pet is in loving hands at Treaty Veterinary Clinic Limerick and Shannon. Providing care for your pet since 1986, at Treaty Vets, your pet is our priority. Call our 24-hour number 061 328 511 or make an appointment through our website www.treatyveterinaryclinic.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram, Treaty Veterinary Clinic. 
proud sponsors of the Health Hub on the Big Bark. And we're back on the Health Hub this week, brought to you by Tree Hume Veterinary Clinic in Limerick and Shannon. And we are joined by Dr. Siobhan O'Neill. Siobhan, big welcome back to the show. Thanks, Dara. Thanks for having me back. No problem at all. And Siobhan, today we're going to be talking like it's, we're going into the start of September now. Kids are starting to go back to school and a lot more kind of normal routine again around the household. A lot of, I suppose, adults have gone back to the workplace now with COVID restrictions kind of more or less completely gone and back to real normality. But that has a huge effect on dogs that like have been used to having people around the whole time, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and so, would, you, would you talk to us a bit about that? Like, what how, in what ways it can affect? Uh, in what way it can affect dogs? Okay, so um, first of all, yeah, it's the first of September. Most kids are back to school now. Um, a lot of families could have spent the summer away. Um, a lot of people go down to the seaside for the summer, and it's a full holiday outing. They take the dog as well. So the dog is used to being to running free all day, going for lots of walks, having lots of attention, having the kids around, having the parents around. Um, and then all of a sudden they're left in the house, locked up all day long. And they're like, what is going on here? So this can turn into um, destructive behavior. Um, so a few things we need to do to try and um, counteract this behavior. First of all, I'll just go through briefly just some of the things that you shouldn't do. And that's to leave the house first thing and just leave the dog with no exercise whatsoever. Your dog is going to be full of exercise or full of energy in the morning. So needs to have a walk. And I think most people do bring their dogs for a walk in the morning and in the evening. Um, so give them a good walk in the morning and tire them out a bit. Um, another thing then would be keep get, leave them something to keep them occupied during the day. If you're not going to be able to get home until lunchtime or you're not going to be able to have a neighbour to pop in or something for a good few hours, um, leave them something, you know, it could be anything from a toy to a food puzzle, anything like that. And you want to keep um, things that they can tear up well out of reach of the dog, like cushions, um even if they're sitting in the sitting room, you know, they could, if they suffer from separation anxiety, they could go at the couch or television leads or anything like that. So um, kind of keep them away from that if if that's, a, if that's going to be a problem. Um, don't leave them, another big thing is don't leave them in unfamiliar surroundings. So if they're used to having the run of the house and all of a sudden you lock them in the bathroom or you lock them in the utility room or something like that, they're going to be destructive. Um, so as well, you know, a few days before the kids go back to school or if we haven't done it yet, it's something that you could try over the weekend is leave the dog wherever you plan on leaving them for the foreseeable future. Leave them in that room for five or ten minutes at a time and then lengthen the amount of time that they're in that room and just leave them and always come back and always give them praise, or always positive reinforcement. Um, so that's that, that can help. And another thing is never make a really big fuss about leaving leaving them in the house so you know a lot of people will be like bye bye you know loving and kissing the dogs and saying i'll be back soon don't worry and again the, the dog is probably thinking what what is going on here so for me i just walk out the door i don't say anything i just close the door behind me and off i go like it's if i'll be back in five minutes um and then obviously we don't want to leave the animals for too long at home. If you're working an eight hour a day and you can't get home, you have to come up with some other option. Maybe a neighbour could pop in just to let the dog out to the toilet or a family member, a friend, anything like that. Then we always have the options of doggy daycare. Um, some of the doggy daycares collect and deliver. And also then we have dog walkers. Um which is is invaluable, I think. Um, if you're because a lot of people work in you know nine to five jobs or even longer hours and um they just can't don't they can't pop home during the day now i know a lot of people are working from home as well which is great but then a lot of people are going back to the office as well um so yeah just keep the dog occupied that's the thing and make sure that they're you you get them used to it train them into um you know train them into new games and train them into knowing their name and making things fun and then leave them for 20 minutes half an hour come back to the same 
they'll think they they'll get into a routine of waiting for you to come back. Um, and then always, as I said, positive reinforcement when you do come in the door, or even if they have done something destructive or they've done something bad, never be, never give out to them or, um, school them in any way because they, they won't understand if they've done it a few hours previous, they won't understand why you're being mad at them. And they'll think, um, you're mad at them just because you're coming in the door. So yeah, there's just a few things that you can just keep in mind, um, especially now that the house is going to be empty, you know, if the kids and or if the kids are starting school, you know, if, the, if they're younger kids and they're just starting school. Um, I think a lot of people went away this summer, you know, down to um, down to the coast with good weather um, and the dogs went with them, you know, so it's going to be a big, a big change now going back now that we're back to September already, like the summer just flew by. Yeah, definitely it has. And like, look, I've, I know something as well. Like, the, I just think the whole year itself has just flown by so far. And I think it's because, like, for, like, even as you mentioned there, like, like dogs especially, like, they had us around for more or less the last two years. Like, look, I'm still working from yeah. home. And I reckon I will be working from home for as long as I'm in my current job. And, yeah. like, I'd say for when I eventually, if I go on to another job eventually and, I like go to an actual office. There'll be a big change for Bruno and Millie, but at the same yeah. time, they have they have my father around a lot of the time as well. So like, yeah, and that's great, and it's great that a lot of people do have their families around to help. Um, and as I said, even if you have a neighbour that can just pop in, it breaks up the day. Um, that would really help a lot. And then there's all there's always different things. Like if your dog is suffering from separation anxiety. Definitely, you know, call the vet and, and have a chat over the phone or come in for a consultation and we can talk things through. And we're not pet behaviourists now or anything, but, you know, we can always advise or come up with a solution or something like that. And even just talking about it really helps as well because the owners can get quite stressed about it and think, oh, my God, we can't keep the dog. And the dog was the dream dog. And now it's turned into this destructive little um, little fluffy. Um, so there's all, you know, talking about it just you know, there's always a solution to the problem. And Siobhan, you mentioned uh, it's actually something I want to bring up with you about separation anxiety. What would be, I suppose, the telltale signs of a dog suffering from separation anxiety? Okay, well, definitely. So if you leave your dog, say, if, even if you're just going into town to meet a friend for lunch or something like that, you'll know from kind of when they're young, you, you know, from from a young age, I think. Um if they're not, if they're with you 24 seven, you're going to have more of a problem. So I think from when you get your puppy or if you have a rescue dog, it maybe could be harder even with rescue dogs because you don't know their history. Um, you need to just leave them for a short amount, short amounts period of time, um, and come back and see how they are. Um, crate training is a good thing as well so that they have their own space. They feel comfortable in their own space. They know their own space. Um, they know that's kind of their safe place where they go. Um, and yeah, I think the big thing is the training part. So leave 10 minutes, come back, then leave for 15 minutes, come back, 20 minutes, come back. It might, it sounds like it's a bit time consuming, but you can do this over, you know, do it over a weekend and then do it in bits and pieces over the week. And bit, I mean, I've, I've said this to a n- numerous, numerous people and everyone's had really positive feedback with this. And I, there's actually something that I read a number read a number of years ago, and the dogs with the I suppose with the sense of smell being so powerful, uh, yeah. the dogs have they can actually like, I suppose sense if you get into the habit of you being due home at a certain time of the day, they can actually get into their like they can sense from the sense of smell and how your own scent has I suppose waned throughout the day. When you're actually due home, I actually read that it was a very interesting study there a number of years ago that the fading of your of your own smell in the house, like lets them know when you should actually uh, be due home. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's another interesting con- and an interesting concept. Now, I've never actually read any papers on that myself, Tara. But again. If you're working, they, they'll get into a routine. So if you're working nine to five or if you're working 10 till six, whatever your hours are, they'll expect you. They'll know by the time of the day and how things go by or when the postman comes and things like that. And they'll know when you're due home. But what happens if you're like an hour or two late? Then they'll start to get stressed. So then that's where you're going to see 
um, you know, you could see some muscle tremors. You might see them drooling a lot. It might look like they're going to be sick. That's when you, you're going to see some destructive behavior. They're not going to, um, that's when you might see them tearing at the furniture or chewing at cables, um, you know, laptop cables or TV cables, things like that. And these kind of things can really damage them, you know. Um, and obviously they're going to, da- they're, it's really going to be upsetting for the owner as well. Um, and then what if they, you know, if they're going to chew wallpaper, I've seen dogs chew through doors, they get so upset and then they get injured, they get injuries, they can break their teeth, they can get cuts, um, cuts so deep that they need to have stitches, you know, these kind of things. So these are all things that we really need to avoid. Like the dogs are so stressed when this happens. And if that's the case, again, you need to come and have a chat with your vet because we can discuss medications, um, and again, training. And lots of there's lots and lots of different things that we can do to to avoid separation anxiety. Absolutely, but your number one tip, I suppose, would be to have someone who can come in during the day to take the dog out, if possible. Yeah, definitely. It's not. I know that's not possible for all people. Um, so you need to before you get a dog, you have to think about that, and I think a lot of people do. Um, but you see, during COVID, when people were in lockdown, everybody was at home 24-7, so they didn't have to think about it back then. And as I said, still now a lot of people work from home, so it's not a problem. We could just let them out into the back garden. Um, but yeah, there's still a lot of people, myself included, that work, um, you know, we don't work nine to fives. Um, we could be gone all day, so we have to make sure that um, somebody is there to um, to let the dog out and have some exercise during the day or take the dog for a walk um, and just not to have the dog in um, in the house all day alone. The dog will shut down as well. You know, the behaviour can change. It'll cause many, many problems. You just have to be really careful. Okay, Siobhan, that's great. And um, we'll leave it at that for today. Uh, thanks for joining okay. us again. And you'll be back to us again, uh, hopefully, probably next week or the week after. Yeah, no worries. Thanks very much for having me, Dara. Lovely, Siobhan. Cheers. Okay, take care. Bye. Do you have a pet in need of a vet or do you need some health advice for your four-legged friend? Whether it's for a regular checkup, microchipping, vaccinations or critical urgent care, you can rest assured knowing that your pet is in loving hands at Treaty Veterinary Clinic Limerick and Shannon. Providing care for your pet since 1986, at Treaty Vets, your pet is our priority. Call our 24-hour number 061 328 511 or make an appointment through our website www.treatyveterinaryclinic.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram Treaty Veterinary Clinic proud sponsors of the Health Hub on the Big Bark and you thanks again to Sh- or de- <sighs> thanks again to Siobhan O'Neill Dr Siobhan O'Neill from Treaty Vets for joining us on the Health Hub today and right quickly moving on because we don't have a huge amount of time left so, we're going to announce the winners of the four pairs of tickets for Pops in the Park. And I'll be telling you a bit then about what's coming up on Pops in the Park. Uh, so, while that was going on, I did the draw. My laptop decided to crash a bit, but I got the draw results. So, our four winners are Malty Poo Harper, Halloumi the Land Cloud, Onion the Axel, and Ronnie the Chalky. I have... Just really emailed all you guys there. And yeah, so that is right. Uh, yeah, I've literally just emailed all the uh, bah, 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 bah. right. So yeah, I think I got response from three people there. So that's awesome. And yeah, I just need to respond to this as well here. But that is like a lot kind of that's been going on. Like we've had our competitions going on. Now, just before we go on to actually I'll leave that till the end of the show. Uh we have another we'll have another competition coming up. But first of all, before we talk about that, I want to talk about Pops in the Park because that's what our giveaway was for. Each of those four winners we announced here won two tickets each to Pops in the Park. And there is on so Puffs and Park is taking place on September 10th and 11th in Marley Park, Dublin. We were hoping to have all the guys on from Puffs in the Park, but unfortunately, our schedules conflicted. We were off air for a couple of weeks, 
And we couldn't exactly do like a like a direct uh, thing there. Uh, oh, I also forgot. I was meant to actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. So yeah, pups in the park. Let's go back to that. Okay, sorry for the distraction there. Often happens. Okay, so it's taking place Saturday, Sunday, Marley Park, Saturday 10th of September, Sunday 11th of September. That is this Saturday and Sunday coming. Tickets are on sale on uh, Pups in the Park, that tickets are high E, Sandal tickets are 18 euro, family tickets available for 56 euro, dogs go free, as do children under two. Uh, not really what I'd be concerned about myself, um, but obviously tickets, uh, doggies going free, great thing. Unfortunately, Big Park won't be there this time around either. We were hoping we would be, but uh, conflicts happen. And honestly, like it's a long way to take the dogs as well. Not taking the doggies the whole way to Dublin because it's too long a journey from Limerick in the car for them. And I'm not just like not going to do that. But I will tell you what is actually going on. And there's a lot going on in Pops in the Park. You have the Lido Main Arena, where is where a lot of the stuff is happening. There's the SPCA dog show on both days. Uh, there's the Regatta Great Dog Walk, Village Vets, Top Pets. You have an obedience ring. You have Zoetus, Zoetus tri- Talks and Workshops, Hay Bale Races, Puppy Play Pen. There's exhibitors. There is a Lido Playground, a Chili Arena, and you have the Chin t- Wag Talk stage as well. Off leash areas, food vendors, and there's a load of exhibitors too. We'll go through each of those now in a sec. Let's give you an idea of what is actually happening in each area. So, on the let's see, who have you got? Uh, just to give you a few of their names that are actually kind of like taking part in this. Uh, Samantha Rawson, who's a friend of the show. Uh, Jay Carter, I believe, is a singer. I'm uh, he will host the Leader Main Arena. Don't exactly know who he is. Peter Collins is the MC, I believe. Uh, let's see who else you have. Your Irish working chief dogs, Dr. Bobby or Ortiz, uh, Dr. Bob, uh, Rob Walsh, the Irish dog father, Pete Vett, Susie Walsh, all huge supporters of the Big Back who will all be taking part in Pops and the Park this weekend. Uh, let's see who. Have, what else have you got? So the arena schedules. Give you an idea of what's on. Your different breed meals from huskies, collies, pawfluencers of all things. Uh, working sheepdogs. Uh, German shepherds, spaniels, pokes. There's a rescue reunion with the DSPCA. There's terriers, dash hounds, retrievers, bichons. All those different breed meals, which is great to see. Uh, Dublin Wicklow Mountain Rescue Team will be doing demonstrations in the main arena. You have the PCA Dufton Parades, Pet Friendly Dublin Fashion Show. Uh, let's see what else you have. Pet Friendly Dublin, not a big supporter of ours. Uh, flyball demonstration. I'd love to see that myself, but hopefully next year we'll see it. Uh, ba, 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 ba. You have Sophia Buzzell and Larry the Dancing Dog. So that's going to be happening both days in the main arena. You have uh, sheepdog herding demonstrations. You have, okay, so you have the DSPCA dog show boat days. Give you an idea of what's happening there. Golden Oldies, wild, different classes here. Golden Oldies, waggish tails, dogs that most look like their owner, cutest puppy, best junior handler, uh, best fancy dress, best trick. Most handsome boy. Sorry, but Bruno, as we know, is already the most handsome boy. I've told him that millions of times. Prettiest girl, that's Millie. Prettiest gal, rather, that's Millie. So, look, these are both days, and these are great competitions to have your dogs in. Best rescue, uh, best crossbreed, and there is a sniffari. So, scent games, talks, and demos, and mental image from Fear Dog. That would be a very interesting one. On the Chin Mike Talk stage, you have. Village Vets Top Pets, a number of seminars there. What you need to know before you get a dog. Do's and don't 
for about pets for kids, which is a big one that all kids should know. We had a very interesting discussion on that last year uh, with someone from the UK, I believe. Do- dogs around kids, that was it. Uh, Peter Vett will be talking about caring for dogs in cooler weather. He was chatting to us previously uh, about, I think he chatted to us previously about hot weather, last year maybe. And he definitely chatted at Pops in the Park in May about helping a dog in hot weather. There is hounds helping humans, Irish guide dogs, Keynes Kennels, and Dublin Wicklow Mountain Rescue Team will be talking there. Dog Tales from the DSPCA. Brezzy actually is taking part in that. So, let's see. So it is discussing Canaan osteoarthritis. Dog Terry panel discussions. Peter Wright talks about boredom prevention for your pet. Hounds at Halloween with Rob Walsh, the Irish dog father, and Dr. Bob B. Ortiz, Dr. Bob. Uh, Doggy Entrepreneurs panel discussion. Village vets on caring for an older dog. So it is discussions why prevention is better than cure. Uh, let's see what else is there. And we have... So Hounds of Halloween again. That's with the two guys again. Uh, Friends for Life, Dog Charity Band Discussion. That's on a Sunday. More or less nearly everything very similar on a Sunday on the two, on the talk stage. You have Dog Nutrition, Do's and Don'ts so with Vicky Rhodes on the Sunday. You have the Village Vets Pet Ambulance Marquee. Uh, talking Village Vets, so we talk about caring for an older dog, signs of dental problems, uh... Talks for kids. Uh, let's see. Colouring competition. Winner gets a pet health plan. I don't think I'd win that. Dog obesity. How to help your dog lose weight. So there's some very interesting topics on in all areas on both days. Let's see what else you have. Uh, you have obedience training. You have puppy obedience with Samantha Rawson. Susie Walsh is doing group obedience training. Bob Walsh does a Q&A session in the obedience ring. Uh, the Irish... Dog for the boot camp. Uh, Susie Walsh will Susie Walsh will host a tongue twist up say a live training consultation. What else have we got? Uh, trust, respect, and understanding your dog with Mary Fowley of the dog knows. Group obedience training. So there's quite a lot there. A Jilly Arena. You have more. You have Sunday. You have Samantha Rawson will hold a training session. So definitely recommend that. Uh, let's see, Irish Dog Father Fun with Fido, fun games there. Uh, so you also have the Regatta, great dog walk happening both days as well. So that will take place. Uh, let's see, ba 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 ba. Feel the wind in your furs to take part in the Regatta, great dog walk led around the beautiful surrounds of Mali Park. So walk is approximately two. Uh, kilometers and you're free to enjoy the walk di- happening at different times throughout both days now let's see exhibitors just to give you an idea i will kind of only give you an idea of a few of them um i suppose ones who have look gonna be not gonna be around the bush of it but people who have previously been supportive of the big bear podcast you have the likes of macho world you have leader you have positive dog training. Let's see who else you have. Pretty Paws, Pet Republic. Uh, there's a few other crowds there. Paul Pooler, one of our friends on the show here. Shoot My Dog. You have Happy Tales. Let's see. Uh, who else have you got? Dog Fathers. Phoenix Barker, definitely saw there. Huge supporters of our show. Always grateful for anyone that supports the uh, Big Bear here. So they're just kind of a few of the different, I suppose, different crowds are uh, taking part. You have a number of different food vendors too. Don't really know who's actually like there. I kind of looks like there's something for everyone though. Um, so there's like grill houses, there's all there's like chicken places, there's vegan places, there's coffee places. So you have something for everyone there, really. So yeah. Uh, that's really all I can kind of say and I just hope the lads have great weather and that everything goes really well for them and yeah I just look I do hope that their whole day is a success for them now just to wrap up 
I told you that we will have more competitions coming. Fair play to everyone who entered our last competition. Four winners have been contacted and were announced earlier on in the show. Uh, we will have our Halloween competition. It will be a fancy dress competition. We want to see your doggies in the best fancy dress. All details will be announced next week on our show for that. We won't be announcing anything this week. Not sure if we'll do the live edition like we did this evening because it was a bit of a hands that we all called together like. And I'd say Bruno Mini could have done a better on their own. Um, my laptop crashed in God knows how many different ways and the audio quality listening back, it was shite, dog shite to be honest. So I don't know if we'll be doing the Instagram Live again going forward or Facebook Live. We'll see. We'll decide. We might. I don't know. Might do smaller Instagram Lives at some stage. Uh, But yeah, we will have a fancy dress competition coming up. We hope to have a couple of prizes to give away on that. Not sure what we'll give away yet. We'll let you know. And we don't know who our sponsor anything is behind that yet. But sure, we'll see. We'll see down the line. Uh, That's pretty much it. One other little thing. You will remember last year we had our 2022 calendars and we will have our calendars come back again this year. So we will be looking in the next two weeks. We will have our post going up. We'll have our link going up for you to submit your doggies pictures to us uh, if you want them to be in our 2023 calendars. We'll also open the free order option at the same time to give people plenty of time to order their calendars we haven't finalized the charities just yet but we will have more details on that join either this week or next week we'll we'll see uh because the calendars are a long way off actually being distributed yet but we need to start getting them put together because last year was a logistical absolute freaking nightmare to actually get them put together but they were beautiful in the end and we sold, I think it was over 200 calendars in total. It raised some great money for various different charities. And we were very happy to do that. And we'll be doing that again this year. Now, as I mentioned, we have six episodes to come in this particular part of the series. Our, episode will, our episodes will finish up with our Halloween episode, which will be around somewhere around the last week of October. We will also then have one special Christmas episode where, now I know it's way too early to talk about Christmas, but we will be doing a big raffle for that. So we will open the raffle tickets around the same time as we order the pre-order for our 2023 calendars. So you'll have the option, obviously, when you're buying the calendars to buy raffle tickets too, but we'll also be given the option just to buy raffle tickets also. Uh... I've already had someone suggest to me we should give the raffle tickets kind of free with the calendars, but no, we will not be doing that because bottom line is just takes money to run these things. And like, look, I suspect maybe the cost of the calendars could go up this year because unfortunately everything else has gone up and I haven't actually priced them yet, but I would be, uh, I suppose... Uh, worried that they will kind of go up in this year unfortunately because I think everything kind of does go up we might be doing some I don't know maybe create some sort of Christmas cards as well uh, where the money will go up for, for a lot of the money will go to charity as well we haven't exactly decided what the process will be yet but I'll let you know well in advance and that's pretty much all I have to say for this evening. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, follow us on TikTok. Getting that properly up and running in the next few weeks, hopefully. Uh, we are on all those channels. We don't have anything much on TikTok. We're on those channels as the Big Bear Podcast. Be sure to check us out and get whatever you need any comments or anything that you want to add, tell your friends to follow too. Tell everybody that you know to follow our pages. If they're a doggy lover, if they're not a doggy lover, obviously we want more doggy lovers, but tell everyone that you know to follow these pages. And we're on the big bar to hi to as well if you want to listen into any of our previous episodes. 
And that's all for today. Uh, I've talked a lot. I talk fast because I have a to run an errand very, very shortly. Uh, not really an errand. I have to go and pick up my absolutely amazing fiance, uh, who always sticks by me in everything I do and is a great mommy to our two puppies, Bruno and Millie, and from Bruno and Millie, and from me, and from everyone. Uh, have a great week. Give your doggies lots of hugs, and we'll see you back here next week. The Big Bark Listen Up Dog Owners is for you, all you canine lovers. It's your favorite podcast, The Big Bark, with your host, Dara Burke, and canine co-hosts, Bruno and Millie. The Big Bark. 